Dear students, in this screencast video lecture, we are going to see about the general classification of the animal kingdom. The animal kingdom is also known as kingdom animalia. It is a systematic way to organize and categorize the all living animal species that have been present in this world. This classification mainly helps the scientists to understand the relationships between the organisms, evolutionary importance and even the characteristics of the different organisms that have been living in this earth. The classification of the animal kingdom is based on the following fundamental features that includes levels of organization, symmetry, diploblastic as well as the triploblastic organization, coelom development, segmentation of the body, and finally, the presence and absence of the notochord, that is the backbone. The broad classification of animals is based on this common fundamental features, that is what are all I have already listed. Say, based on the level of organization, it can be referred as a cellular level or tissue or organ and organ system level of organization. An example for a cellular level of animals includes the those that coming under the phylum porifera. Whereas the other groups say for example based on the symmetry that is how the animal can be divided that is based on radial symmetry or bilateral symmetry they can be separated. And the next parameter what I have told that is based on the body cavity which is also technically referred as a coelom that is without a body cavity it can be coming under the phylum platyhelminthes that is the organism that coming under platyhelminthes are all belonging to those that are acelobate in nature whereas those that coming under ascal helminthes are coming under the pseudocelomate category and finally coelom containing organisms are coming under various other phylums that are all listed there that is annelida arthropoda molluscans echinodermata hemichordata as well as chordata now we try to look at every fundamental features one by one among the all the first one is the levels of organization that is classification of organization based on the levels mainly as a unicellular or multicellular though all members of the animalia are multicellular in nature all of them do not exhibit a same pattern in the organization of the cells for example if you look at into the sponges the cells are commonly arranged very loose aggregates. That is, they exhibit a cellular level of organization in their functioning. That is, their division of labor activities are mainly at a rudimentary level that is just occurring among the different cells. Whereas, if you look at into the members of the sealant trait, the cells are more complex and they perform the same function whereas they have been arranged into a form called as a tissues. Here it is referred as a tissue level of organization is a common feature of the cylindrate group of organism. A still higher level of organization that is organ level organization can be exhibited in organisms that coming under the platyhelminthes group of category. Even in a higher phyla the tissues can be further even grouped to form into some special organs for a specialized function or all. So, this is the case in the other group of higher phyla that includes annelids, arthropods, molluscans, echinoderms as well as cardate. They have associated, they have the organs that have been found associated to form into certain functional systems that are specifically concerned to some special physiological function. So, this kind of a higher level of organization is referred as a organ system level of organization. The organ systems in different groups of organisms will be usually exhibiting various patterns of complexity. For example, the digestive system of the organisms under platyhelminthes are commonly referred as an incomplete digestive system. This is mainly due to the reason that there is only a single opening in the outside of the body that serves both the mouth as well as anus of the system. Whereas, some organism 
will be having a complete digestive system there I will be having two openings that is mouth and anus as separate openings even if you look at into the circulatory system type there are two types are there an open type as well as a closed type here in the open type the blood will be pumped out of the heart and the cells and tissues are completely or directly bathed there into the circulatory system whereas if you look at into the closed type of circulatory system the blood will be circulated through a series of vessels of varying diameters that is blood flows between the different parts of the body only with the help of arteries veins or capillaries the next parameter what we are going to discuss is symmetry animals can be categorized basis of their symmetry say they can be categorized as a radial symmetry or bilateral symmetry so sponges are mostly asymmetrical in nature it is an opposite to the symmetry that is asymmetrical meaning any plant that passes through the center does not able to divide them into a equal halves whereas if you look at into the organisms under the coelenterate as well as stenophores and echinoderms say starfishes are all they are commonly exhibiting a radial symmetry that is when a plant passing through the central axis of the body it cuts or divides the organisms into two identical or equal halves there whereas the other one is a bilateral symmetry which is a feature there in the organisms belonging to annelid as well as arthropods wherein the body can be divided into identical left and right halves only in a single or in one plant so they are commonly referred as a bilateral symmetry the next parameter that have been taken there into consideration for the classification is some special types of cells that have been arranged there in the embryo based on that they can be classified into diploblastic as well as triploblastic group of organisms say animals will have cells that are arranged in the two embryonic layers that is an external ectoderm layer as well as internal endoderm layer this two layer containing animals are referred as diploblastic animals example includes those comes under the coelenterate of phylum and an undifferentiated layer which is commonly referred as a mesoglea is usually present between the ectoderm as well as endoderm of this particular group of organisms there is another group in which the developing embryo is also having a third germinal layer which is specifically referred as mesoderm it has been present in between the ectoderm and endoderm and this third layer germinal layer containing organisms are specifically referred as a triploblastic group of organism those that comes under platyhelminthes are a classical example for this the next important characteristic features that are considered for the classification is the coelom that is presence or absence of a body cavity specifically taken here for the consideration here the body cavity is the one that have been present between the body wall and the gut wall and is specifically referred by the term coelom the body cavity which is lined by the mesoderm is referred as a coelom animals that are possessing the coelom are commonly referred as a coelomate group of animals which includes annelids molluscans arthropods echinoderms hemichordate as well as most of the chordates in some animals the body cavity is not lined by the mesoderm instead this mesoderm is present as a scattered pouches in between the ectoderm as well as the endoderm such body cavity containing organisms are referred as a pseudo coelomate organism a classical example here is organisms that comes under the ascelminthes group of category next a coelomates refers to organism in which totally the body cavity is absent again the classical example for this are the platyhelminthes groups of organism the next parameter is segmentation in some animals the body is externally or internally divided into segments with a serial repetition of at least some organs in that particular segments the example here is earthworm 
its body shows this pattern and this kind of a pattern are referred as a metameric segmentation and this phenomena is technically referred as a metamerism and the last point that have been taken there into the classification is the notochord notochord is a mesodermally derived cells that is derived from the middle layer of the cells or tissues of an embryo or the parts that have been derived from the cartilage muscles or the bone cells so this mesodermally derived cell lead to the formation of a rod like structure there in the dorsal side that is in the posterior side this happens mainly during the embryonic development this particular structure is referred by the term notochord animals with notochord are referred as a chordates whereas those animal which do not form this particular structure in their entire life cycles are referred as a non chordates example members of porifera as well as echinoderms finally we look at the hierarchical system of classification which starts broad at the top and become increasingly specific or so narrow when it goes in the downside the first level of classification here is a kingdom the next one is phylum next one is a class and subsequent order family genus and species for an easily remembrance i have given a phrase there king play chess on funny green square here the k stands for kingdom P stands for phylum, C stands for class, O stands for order, F stands for family, and the green stands here for the genus, and the final one is species. Under kingdom, it can be referred as a animalia. All the animals are grouped there, and in the phylum, based on the groups or the body plan, they can be referred as a chordate or arthropods. Say, if you look at into the class. here further the phylum is divided into certain classes such as a mammalia which refers to mammals and herbs which refers to the birds in the order it's a lower than that of the class an example is carnivora as well as a primates if you look at the example for a family here is a felidae as well as a canidae these are all examples for family for a genus example is a panthero panthero here refers to a organism that comes under the lion group and felis is the one which refers to organism that comes under the cat group species specifically the panthero leo refers to lion whereas felis catus is a example of a domestic cat so this is the way in which animals that have been present in the earth have been classified hierarchically from kingdom to species on total 31 phyla of animals are seems to be existing among this 10 phyla are well known and that have been much understood in this animal kingdom those includes phylum porifera phylum coelenterata tinofera platyhelminthes ascalhelminthes then phylum arthropoda mollusca echinodermata hemichordata as well as chordata